Let's look at stressors and the consequences of stress. Essentially, we're going to be looking at the causes and the consequences of stress in a person's life, especially in an organizational context. So let's talk about some of the stressors. And the first big category of stressor is, are the physical stressors. And in an organizational context, things like uh, the temperature of uh, the work environment, maybe working in a hot building, working out in hot sun, a cold building or out in the cold. Noise is another physical uh, stressor. All these things make it difficult to work, put demands on the body, and increase stress in a, an individual. Another example of physical stressor is the pace of the work. How fast do they have to work? Do they have to move around? How fast do they have to get uh, things done? That's a source of stress. And then another physical stressor is the sheer number of hours worked. Um, do they get rest time? Are the uh, uh, hours very long? Is there a lot of overtime? Um, the, the more hours worked, the more stress is uh, involved in, uh, in a work situation. So those are physical stressors. There's also psychological stressors, and these are probably more common than the physical stressors because everybody can experience the psychological stressors even when you're in the best physical environment imaginable. Now, one is the lack of control over one's work. The idea of being micromanaged rather than having autonomy. We like being able to decide the best way to do our work, and we choose to do it in a way that's the least stressful, while at the same time maximizing uh, uh, our, our output. And when we don't have that uh, um, freedom, when we're micromanaged, when we're told exactly how to do it, even when we would prefer doing it or are convinced that there's some other better way of doing that, rather than having autonomy, we get stressed. Another uh, psychological stressor is the lack of control over the environment or schedule. An example is, is what's known as hoteling. When somebody goes into an office and they don't have their own desk, but they're just assigned a specific desk for the, for the day. It's not really their own environment. They don't feel like it's their own. They can't decorate it themselves. It's not their own safe space where they can do nothing but work, but it's just a temporary organizational hotel that they stay in. Um, the same thing with a uh, schedule. Uh, the, lack, the less a person can control their own schedule, the more stressed they're going to be because of the demands uh, that are coming into them. If they're not able to adjust their schedule to respond to the demands, it's going to be a source of stress. Interpersonal conflict is a big source of stress. Nobody likes conflict. Role ambiguity. That's not knowing the expectations. If you're given work to do or, or uh, uh, you're promised training but you don't get it, you can get really stressed out because you don't know if what you're doing is right, what you're supposed to be doing. Um, it especially gets bad if you get in trouble for not doing what the uh, supervisor wanted, even when the supervisor didn't tell you what he or she wanted. So role ambiguity is a source of stress. Role conflict is when you've got conflicting demands uh, being put on you. Uh, I had a, an interesting situation one time. I, uh, I was teaching adjunct at a, a university during the summer, and the class was supposed to meet 15 hours per week. And I was told that there's a new rule for uh, adjunct professors that they should only uh, give no more than 10 hours per week to a class. So I have two rules that I have to follow, two expectations, 10 hours a week or less per class, plus 15 hours of class per week. That was stressful. There's not really anything you can do to meet everybody's expectations in a situation like that. Another uh, stressor is role overload. That's when too much is expected. When the, 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 the goals and the expectations are lifted higher and higher until you can't do that. You can't meet them anymore. Difficult goals are good, but impossible goals are not good. That creates stress. Another uh, source of stress is work-life conflict, which is when there's, that's the opposite of work-life balance. 
when work is interfering with life or when work is interfering with family, um, that creates stress. And then another uh, source of psychological stress that we often don't think about is what's known as emotional labor. And that's where you have to have certain emotions as part of your uh, um, uh, job. And you have to either create or suppress emotions to, to get the job done. So people in customer service, they have to be friendly, even when they don't have to be friendly. Um, people that interact with the public, they've got to be cheerful and positive. They have to create these emotions. And whenever you have to do this emotional labor, it contributes to uh, the stress that people feel. So those are all psychological stressors, which are in, in addition to the physical stressors. Now let's look at what the consequences of stress is. What happens if you're stressed for uh, a long time? We'll start with the physical consequences, and these are things that happen in your body. There's heart disease, strokes, digestive problems, back pains, headaches, all of these things are uh, aggravated by uh, um, uh, stress. Um, when we are stressed, we make cortisol, which is one of several stress hormones, and continued high levels of stress hormones also lower one's immunity. And so we tend to get just sicker with, with colds and things like that uh, uh, more often when we're stressed. So these are kind of ways of forcing our body to, uh, to slow down. Um, so those are some of the physical consequences of stress. There's also psychological consequences of stress. Depression and anxiety are perhaps the, the most visible uh, uh, measures of stress. In fact, if you measure um, uh, the symptoms of people with depression and anxiety, and then you measure how stressed they are, you almost find a one-to-one -one correspondence between depression and anxiety and um, uh, uh, stress. Um, the, but, it, but stress doesn't always lead to a depression and anxiety. Sometimes it just leads to sleep, perhaps family problems. If you come home in a stressed mood and you don't have the energy to uh, uh, give to your uh, family, and it leads to burnout, job satisfaction, and uh, attrition. People don't like being in stressful jobs, um, and so they tend to uh, uh, burn out, be dissatisfied, or leave the job. Now there's also um, uh, work-related consequences. It's not just the individual who suffers the consequences, but the organization can pay uh, the price for uh, stressed out workers too. One is when stress stays high, performance tends to go down. So it's not economically beneficial for organizations to uh, overstress workers. It turns into the, the eustress, moves into the distress. Um, another uh, problem with stress is it leads to cognitive overload. People just don't think clearly when too much is going on and too much pressure, and they make more mistakes and don't think as clearly. And then to, to balance out the, uh, um, uh, the situation, there are often a counterproductive work behaviors called CWBs, that's the abbreviation, where people do things at work that are counterproductive, that hurt the organization or hurt other individuals, such as theft and sabotage, the drug use, absenteeism, low work quality, just, just being mean at work is often a response to uh, um, stress, especially when the stress is seen as being uh, unjust. Now, not everybody gets stressed in the same way when they have stressors. So what we say is we said there's some moderators of stress. The relationship between stressors and stress isn't one-to-one. -one. Um, how people respond is, uh, can have a big effect on the, um, what the consequences of stress will be. So there are some things that change the relationship between the stressors and the consequences of stress. These, we call these moderators. For example, personality. People who are positive and upbeat and can reframe things, that will make a, um, that, that'll help them deal with stress. The locus of control. 
people who have an internal locus control and who believe that they have, can have an influence on the, the world around them and the environment around them tend to uh, react to stress better compared to people who have an internal locus of control, who see themselves as, as helpless victims of, of what's happening to them in life. Another moderator is social support. If you're surrounded by people that are there to support you, that are your friends, that, that provide you the encouragement and the strength that you need, you can deal with stressors better than people that don't have that social support. And then coping strategies. And we'll look at those in detail, but basically coping strategies are ways that we choose to respond to sources of stress, some of which can be positive and some of which can be negative. 